All right, we're up to 39 participants. Girls, it's okay. I'm really talking to someone. <laughs> yeah, right. I, well, that's why they question me. <laughs> Basically, what I'm going to show you very quickly with Zoom is you can use it for what we're doing now. We can meet face to face. We can see one another. We can have dialogue. We can talk. At the bottom of your screen, if you are using a computer, if you are on a phone, I am sorry, I cannot help you. Please review the slides and try along when you have your laptop available to you. If you're on your computer, you're going to see at the bottom of your screen a toolbar. The toolbar even though you're a participant and not the leader of the meeting, the toolbar allows you to mute yourself to start and stop the video so others can see you. You can invite people to the meeting. Um, at the bottom, you see chat, hit the chat window. That's gonna pull up a dialogue box to where we could type and communicate that way. So if we had someone who did not have audio, we could have dialogue right there in the chat box. The chat box allows us to attach files as well. We can copy and paste URLs into the chat box. Now the chat box is not retroactive. So if I have pasted the presentation to my slides in the chat box and someone joined later, they would not be able to see the chat before they join. The chat will begin the moment they join. So if you are doing this live and you have participants coming, just be cognizant you may need to post that URL in that chat box more than one time. Avery, I have to do work. Go sit down. All right, right beside the chat, that green box share. Now, I'm gonna share my screen and I'm gonna pull up the presentation to show you what that would look like. You have to go. Go watch Buzz. Okay, mommy will come play with you in a minute. Mommy has to go do her job. If you do a good job, I'll give you a happy face. All right, so first thing, obviously, you're going to sign up. I have to go do my work. Here. I'm going to scroll down to show you this toolbar. We talked about the mute. Okay. You can stay in here, but you have to be quiet. Erin, can I get you to mute your mic, please? Ms. Fridley, if you look at the bottom of your screen, you should see a mute button on the far left side. The bottom is a toolbar if you hover. Looks like this. All right, so the record button, I'm gonna talk about that with tutorials and how you can use that to create tutorials and you can post live tutorials sharing your screen and using the annotate tools. But right now, I just wanna show you what you're seeing here. That share button allowed me to do what I'm doing now. You can project whatever is on your screen so the participants can follow along instead of having them go here, go there, you all can view the same screen. And if you're using a doc in Office 365 or you're using a Word doc and you're collaborating and you're sharing your screen, everyone is going to see those changes at one time. So that share screen tool is great for collaboration and having one person kind of on the displaying side and everyone collaborating in a, a different space. Now, when you choose share screen, it's going to give you a pop-up window. The pop-up window is going to have all of the screens that you have open, as well as a whiteboard and an iPhone, iPad device option. I don't use iPads, so I'm not really sure how that would work, but I'm sure it's probably like when you project your screen onto your computer or a television. It's probably similar to that tool. If you use the whiteboard option, we're gonna look at that for just a moment in a few minutes. But you have the same capability as you would with almost um, like your Mimeo. You can use the tools to write, create algorithms, show the steps in the process, 
So that's going to be really cool if you want to create tutorials. So share screen. That's it. Choose the screen you want to share and it will project. Stop. Stop. Go in there and watch Bud. This is an example of me sharing my screen with a power school test open. So if I was doing a live tutorial, I could just open a power school test in a PDF. Go to my share screen options, choose that screen that I opened as the PDF, and then I could use this toolbar across the top to allow me to review some test taking strategies. Like we could look at the question, highlight keywords, underline keywords, and just go through the process as if we were working together. So share screen and annotate, they're really great. The eraser, or the trash can will clear everything. The eraser can clear specific lines that you've created. Now, the downfall I have found with using these tools, when you scroll, the lines and images that you have created stay in place. So if I move my page up, the words that I've highlighted are no longer highlighted because the page has moved, but my annotations have stayed in the same place. I would suggest just clearing the screen when you've done that or take screenshots and put them into a presentation like I've done for you guys. Now, let me stop sharing. I'm gonna go back to share, but this time I'm gonna choose whiteboard. And the cool thing is when you guys are viewing it, you can't see the tools, you only see the tools in the screenshots. So I'm going to take draw, I'm going to get a thin line, I'm going to use black and let's say two thirds compared to one fourth. So if I wanted to do a tutorial, I would have myself in the meeting. So I've created a Zoom session by myself. I've not invited anyone. When I've started the session, I'm the only one there and I've clicked record. That record right there at the bottom of my toolbar as the facilitator of the Zoom session. So everything that I say and project will be recorded and then saved to my computer. So if I wanted to show my students how to complete a math problem and the algorithm or the steps in the process in the math problem, I could use whiteboard and use those annotation tools to actually go through the entire process, recording my voice and the steps that you're seeing on the screen. So I'm just gonna use the butterfly method to compare these two fractions. I'm gonna choose a different color so I can show the steps in the process. I know that when I use the butterfly method, I'm gonna draw my nice butterfly to show the multiplication process of two times four is eight and one times three is three. So I'm gonna change my color again and I know that two thirds is indeed greater than one fourth. And I could erase and it's gonna give me an option to clear all or clear certain pieces. I'm gonna clear all and then I could draw a second problem and go through that, that process as well. So this is just a tool you could use to show those tutorials. I know when I was in the classroom, I would always have parents say to me, I try to help them, but they always say, that's not how Miss Audino does it. So if you have a video to show how you've done it, kids could click on it, and they could see your steps in a process and hear you go through those steps. The same thing with the reading passage I was telling you. If you took a power school test and you wanted to talk about I get a different thicker. If I was doing something in reading and I was looking for key words or I was talking about text features and I wanted to talk about, um, the first question is, 
why doesn't winter swim well? Why are the trainers afraid? Well, it's because she needs to learn how to swim without a tail. So I could highlight It's not wanting to do it onto my PDF here, but. All right, so screen share is pretty cool. Do I have any volunteers who would like to hit that screen share and hit whiteboard and, and just write on the whiteboard? You don't even have to do a problem or anything. You can write the word hello, but just, click share, and then choose whiteboard for me and just touch some of those tools, anyone? Baker, thank you, Baker. Ms. Adino, is this something that we are using, um, like students will log in on Zoom or is this for recording um, pre-recorded video? student right now I'm seeing it as something we could pre-record video I know sped teachers you guys have to still meet this is a great platform to hold your meetings you can invite parents and administrators here and you document it by recording the meeting so I'm seeing it right now as using it as to record tutorials for meetings when we have to meet as a, a school with our grade level or with administration but with talks of us going out for longer periods of time, I'm sure we're going to look towards some type of online platform. And they're pretty similar. So if you learn how to use one, the next one will be almost intuitive. Thank you. Well, thank you. Laura, would I be able to use my document camera with this? I know my handwriting would be atrocious on this whiteboard. <laughs> Tiffany, that was, you would share your screen. And just make sure when you share your screen, you're sharing, you choose the one with the document camera image. Awesome. Thank you. No, great questions, guys. And thanks everybody for coming on. I know it was kind of quick, but I had the brainstorm idea of, no, I think they would really like this right now. Laura, this is Joe. Do you think that um, it will get to the point that we will, um, that the platform will be be used on our phones, kind of like um, the employee self-serve was? This is, has nothing to do with Prince George County. This was just sort of like my brainstorm of, oh, teachers might like this. So Prince George would be the ones to decide what and when we use if we actually go to communicating with parents oh. via some type of platform. Um, okay. This is just something I thought teachers would like to record tutorials and maybe meet with grade levels. That was my okay. idea. All right. Thanks. I'm, I'm not official. Okay. <laughs> On the phone, you still have a option to share content. Now I'm a little nervous to click that because I don't know what it's going to share, but <laughs> <laughs> oh. it doesn't have a... oh. <laughs> um, you know, I don't want to pop in my Facebook up here if you guys all want to see my Facebook, but uh, it has like, I can share my screen or photos or iCloud drive, um, basically all of it. So um, I don't know if that's helpful for anybody else using their phone right now, but. Actually, Lindsay, like I said, when you do the share, the share option, iPhone and iPads, I mean, they're written verbatim. So I'm sure it's very compatible to the iOS platform. I've never used my phone. I've always used my laptop, so I couldn't answer. But if you have those options, I would make sure that the device was, I wouldn't want to use my phone if I was communicating with someone. I would want to use my school device just because. So with the participants in the list, are you able to see that later? Like, could you pull it back up? Like I had this meeting and these are all the people that showed up or? I am recording it. So okay. I will be able to see it later. Now, when I do this with whole groups and adults and we do adult learning like through Code BA, I actually have created a form in Google. They have to click on it and say, I'm here. And, you know, they do their own attendance. Here's so I have a nice sheet later. So if I was doing an IEP meeting, you would want that signature, even if it was a digital signature. And again, I am not official. 
this is just me thinking, you would you would need them to be able to sign off somewhere else. You would have to document that. Okay. These are really good questions. Anybody else want to do the share screen and play with the whiteboard and draw? It's super easy. It's kind of cool for um, when we do IEP meetings, if we can't send, a, you know, if we can send the draft in the email, but then we can pop the draft up on the um, screen to use or our um, data. Um, we can pop it up there, which is pretty cool. I think so too. I, I didn't even get to see who's writing. Who's writing? Is that Pete? Sh Shelly Lewis. Sh I think. Lewis? Lewis, okay. Nice penmanship. I'm telling you, that's very nice. <laughs> Lewis has skills. <laughs> Beautiful. So it, it's very, very easy. And if it was just, I could go up and say, all right, guys, you remember how we do long division in class? You give your little, little spiel, your blurb, and you can just step by step. And it could be literally a 30 second recording. And that recording is gonna be housed on your computer. You get to choose the folder it goes into. So once you go to share it out on YouTube or whichever platform you use, you just upload it. And teachers, you know, the Google Sites that we created two years ago, if you log into Google and go to Sites, you have a site you've already created. All you need to do is maybe update a few things and you can link and embed those videos right from your Google Drive. If you want like tutorials like this and you have something specific like, Laura, can you help me do this? We can certainly meet and do like a one-on-one -on -one or a small group grade level PD on sites again, forms. We can create a platform where we have more parent and community involvement because I know with the limited access to technology and, and internet and network in our county, a lot of people are dependent upon their phone. So if we could just make it a little bit easier for them to access, that would be awesome. <laughs> you guys have any questions? Help me do IEPs, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Laura, I have a question. This is Joan. Um, is it okay for us to practice on our own on it? Is that a problem or it's... Oh, no. Yes, ma'am. When you look, create your account at the top, and let me go back to that slide because I got excited. Let me screen share again. And all of this is in the presentation I sent you guys. So once you sign up, you're gonna sign up with your school email address because that does make a difference. Right now, because of the coronavirus, the time limit usually for a free account is 40 minutes per session. But because of just the unprecedented, the state of the, uh, whatever, I don't even wanna talk about it. <laughs> so at the top, it says important notice that 40 minute time limit has just went out the window. It's been extended, so it's unlimited. Now, I did find out talking to a couple of you yesterday via email that bandwidth connection, could you join via your phone? I'm like, sure, absolutely you can. And then when I realized I had a free account, I do not have the area code, so I could not share and, and do a meeting by phone with a free account. So that was a limit that I found. But once you log in, it is very easy. You're going to have three things across the top of your toolbar. Schedule a meeting, join a meeting, host a meeting. Click schedule a meeting. And the next window will pop up to where you name it. You put a little description in. You select your time, day, when you want it to start. I always let it generate automatically so my meeting IDs are not the same. Okay. Here, you do have to remember to touch these um, radials. By default, video is off. I like video, I think it makes it more personable. So remember to just click on for yourself as the host and the participant. Um, 
audio. I select both and then I realized, well, it doesn't make a difference. Now, here are some features. These are also optional. You can allow people to join before you. Now, I, I always allow people to join before I do because some people are early birds and they wanna make sure they have connection. So if they wanna log on five minutes before, I want them to have that opportunity. I share screen and I usually put a slide on like this. So when they log in, they don't feel like they're in a black hole in a room by themselves. Mm -hmm. So if you have something projected, they're like, oh, okay, yeah, it starts at 10. So they know to wait. So I'll allow them to join before I join. The next one, um, mute participants upon entry. I normally do that. I didn't do that this time because I didn't want some of us who were logging in on different devices not be able to talk if you wanted to. I wanted you to have that option to talk. But if you have, say we're doing this with a large group of more than 100 people, you want to mute them before they come into the room. Otherwise, it would be very difficult to get that background noise down. Enable the waiting room. Yes, you can do that as well. Um, record automatically. I do not normally record automatically. I press record once I'm ready to start. Save your meeting. When you save your meeting, you'll see your meeting here. You'll click on it and it gives you all the information. You can double check it. You can send it via your <coughs> calendar if those <coughs> items are connected. I usually just go right here. It says copy invitation. When you click on copy invitation, a pop-up window comes up and it's gonna have the same information that looks familiar to you. It's the same thing I stuck in the email. It puts the hyperlink for the participants to join right in the email. You don't even have to copy and paste it. You can just click this button here. It says copy meeting invitation. And then go into your email and click paste. All of that information will be pasted into the email. Send the email to participants. Or create a calendar invite and paste that into the information of your calendar invite. And that will put it on their calendar with the URL to join the meeting. So I, I like that as well. Any questions on creating? It's really those steps. Once you join, you'll click schedule a meeting. You'll fill in the information just like you were doing a calendar invite, the, the topic, the time. You may want to change your video on. These are optional. And then click save. You'll copy and paste the invitation into the email or calendar invite. And when you're ready to start the meeting, when you sign in, you click on your profile, you'll have a whole menu here on the right with options. Like I changed my profile picture. If you clicked on profile, you could change your profile picture. You could change how your name is displayed. You have some options if you made recordings. Um, you just hit start. That starts the meeting. Do you have to wait to the time you scheduled? No, you don't. So if I wanted to do a bunch of practice meetings, they can be 30 seconds, they can be 40 seconds, 40 minutes, and you can practice, it's not gonna matter. But if you do hit record, it's gonna wanna save it to your device, just delete it so you don't have a bunch of unnecessary recordings. Okay, okay, thank you. You're welcome. I think that was probably more than what you asked. I apologize. Yes, very, very good. <laughs> so guys, you have this presentation and it's pretty much what we've done. The only difference is you need to go through and just kind of set it up and play with it. You don't have to invite anybody. Um, I was going to give you a recording of me going through the power school test. I may do that. Um, or do some other tutorials that we can actually use. I did not do it because when I was working on it, it was almost 2 a.m. and I was sounding a lot like Gomer Powell. It was not, not pretty. <laughs> do we have any questions? After, hey, it's Pete. After you record a um, lesson, 
can you share it on YouTube or Facebook? Yes. Pete, you have Google Drive and you're familiar with Google Drive. Yeah. Create a folder on Google, your Google Drive. Change the permissions of your folder, you know how you share. Yes. Click on share, drop it down, change it to view, everyone on the web. So that URL now to that video can be shared with anybody on the web. Okay. So mm -hmm. if you didn't want to put it on YouTube, but you just wanted to be able to share your URL, like in your classroom, mm -hmm. your Google classroom, yeah. drop it on Google drive, change the permissions for sharing and then share that URL. Can you send okay. a URL through Can you send a URL through like remind or something like that? I'm asking for Krista. Yes. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Um, question about that same thing. Sure. Can we add the link to our Clever ID? You would have to do that through a help ticket to the school board office. I can't okay. answer that. I okay. don't know. Girls, it's okay. These are great questions. Now, if you want to learn more about sharing via Google Drive, looking at how to set up Google Classroom, I of course, on our webpage, we have all of those tutorials. But if you send me some, um, well, if you tell me, we can do this and we can go through setting up Google Drive or setting up Google Classroom together. We can do, you know, sort of individualized PD and our PJs. Mm -hmm. I heard joy. I heard somebody. Get it. <laughs> All right, guys, if you have any questions, I'm not going to take all of your morning. It was short and sweet. It took only 30 minutes, but because you're going to go in and actually create your account, you're going to play with it. This is definitely an hour of PD that we spent together. Okay. Dr. Clay, are you here? Do you want to add anything? Ms. Hicks, are you here? Anybody? I am here. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. So first of all, thank you, Laura. You are a rock star. That was great. I'm sorry, I didn't have the video. I have parents coming in, so I've kind of been back and forth. Um, you know, we have those grade level meetings set up for Thursday and Friday, uh, and I'll give everybody the same information. So using Zoom is not a requirement. I heard Laura say that, but it is a great resource, um, especially for learning specialists who have to still do meetings. Um, so I would say it's a great tool. Um, use it, ask Laura questions, uh, and thank you all for coming today. I will do PD points. So Laura, if you'll get me a list, you can just email it to me. Um, guys, let me put together a form real quick so I can make it official. Just give me literally just a couple of seconds and I can get that done. Um, that way we can have it. I really do appreciate everybody joining and logging in. I know that if you live in the county, I lived there for three years and I found it to be extremely difficult. I burned up two phones using them as hotspots. It, it just wasn't available. And not coming from that and moving into that, it was a, it was a, a, a realization I had no idea. I just assumed, what, it's going on the internet didn't realize you could not. <laughs> All right. I'm sorry guys, I should have had a form ready. I didn't think about attendance and points, but it's a good idea. We should get our, our points. And like I said, anything that you think of, um, I know that Brittany does Padlet. Padlet is a, a great interactive board that does not require anyone to log in. You can post files, you can comment, you have that interaction. So that's another platform. So if you'd like to do something on Padlet, um, Flipgrid is fantastic and is now free to teachers. So Flipgrid is another platform to where students can record their video and it's it's a video response to where you guys can post a question and the students can 
reply back by video. McKay, I think we did Flipgrid last year with your kids, didn't we? Sure, we did. Uh, Laura, do you mind uh, emailing us those uh, apps that you just mentioned, or those uh, platforms you just mentioned? They're actually already on our website. If you go to our teacher page. Okay. Um, underneath, I don't know if it's quick links or, but, but they're on there. They're all on okay. there. Everything's on there. Cool. Thank you. You're welcome. So I, just, I know someone was asking about a test one to kind of play with. When you create your account, it gives you the option to do that. I just saw that. Like to start your test meeting or something. Beautiful. Guys, I'm going to just send an email. I don't want to keep you. For some reason, it's going, I've got about, all right, I'm not lie. I've got about 10 Google accounts. And every time I create a form, it's creating it in the, the wrong account. It's not going to let me share it with you guys. So instead of me trying to, I just need to log out and then open up my Beasley ITRT Google account. So check your email. I'm going to send you a form. Please post attendance inside the form. I'm going to also have a short answer of PD you'd like to do in your PJs while we're off. Think about um, all of those platforms I mentioned. I might do some examples in there, but I really enjoyed seeing all of you. That was a lot of fun. If there's no other questions, we're going to end the meeting and look for your email so you can get attendance points. And we're done. Any questions? Thank you, Laura. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming out. I appreciate it. Stay well. You too. Be safe, please. Bye. Go. Bye bye. Thank you, bye. Bye. Thanks, bye. Laura. Bye, Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Have a Thank good day. Thank you. Go. 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 Go